episode 33 of About IBD. I'm Amber Tresca. Welcome to the second part of my interview with Brooke Abbott, otherwise known as Crazy Creole Mommy and one half of IBD Moss. We get into a discussion of reaching out when you need help. We talk about how difficult it is for both of us to reach out in various different ways, even when it is totally acceptable and expected for us to do so, we still struggle with it. That's why we wonder how we can help people who also feel the same, particularly when people with IBD and moms with IBD are finding it a challenge to reach out to someone even though they really do need help. This is part of the reason why both of us have our blogs, myself at About IBD and Brooke at CrazyCreoleMommy.com, and also why I've been writing for very well since 2000 and providing information about IBD and about other digestive disease topics. That information there is passive. People can come to it and get good information at any time they want without interacting with someone. But we also want to make sure that we're easily reachable, and we also try to reach out to people that we think might need a little help in some way. We acknowledge that it's a struggle. We acknowledge that both of us are not very good at reaching out ourselves, so we all want to try to do a better job of it. If you have ideas about ways to reach out, both of us are all ears. And so, get ready to soak up some of Brooke's great insights on how we can connect to one another. I know for myself, even asking someone who's close to me for help, reaching out and saying, I'm struggling, or I can't do this, or I need a little boost today, you know, do you got anything yeah. for me? That's hard for me. Oh, yeah. How do you, how can we help the people that are like that, that that's challenging for them? Because I think you and I are in these common spaces already saying, it's all right, you can reach out to us. We're available to you in many different ways. But I don't know that people are necessarily comfortable with that. Well, I think you can't wait for people to reach out. You have to be about action. I remember reading this thing Martin Luther King said about how he wasn't going to wait for someone to come to him and ask him how they could help. He was going to go to them. He was going to reach out and show them how they could help. And so I think that the best thing that IBD moms can do, and this is probably where the platform of the website could, could be very handy, um, is put out the information there so that if, so they don't have to reach out, they can just surf the web and there it is and, and, and pull from it what they can you know, and reach out to people. If you see people on uh, Twitter or on Facebook or like every now and again, I'll see someone who has liked an article um, that we've posted on Facebook or they've engaged in Twitter a couple of times. I've reached out to them after and just said, hey, what's going on? How are you? Um, I saw you, you know, you liked this particular post. Do you have any questions? Do you need anything? Can we be of service? I think it's going to be a constant um, ask, how can we be of service? Because you and I, I think both, even though we're sitting here preaching, reach out to us, we both have that problem where we don't reach out to other people. My mom will look at me sometimes and just be like, I have been calling you and clearly something's wrong and you are not responding. And it's probably because I've been needing help, but I just, it's not that I don't know how to ask. It's that I feel guilty for asking. I actually don't know what my issue is with it. I Maybe I'm not very good at figuring out my own mind, but it is very challenging even to ask for help with something that I don't know how to do. Yeah. And even sometimes when it's a transaction, when yeah. it's not even like asking for um, a friend to, you know, meet you for coffee or something like that, just because you need a little pick me up. Even if it's something where I'm trying to get some work done and I'm going to hire someone to do it. Even then I feel like weird about it. It's been ingrained in us that, you know, asking for help appears weak and 
you know, women, we, women in general, whether of color or not of color, have had to, for generations, spent our lives proving ourselves, right? So when you ask for help, you feel judged and you feel guilty and you feel weak and you feel like, mm, I could probably figure this out on my own. You don't have to figure it out on your own. You don't have to figure out every little thing on your own. That is, and I'm saying this out loud and people are probably listening to this and they're like, well, look at Missy. She just got it all figured out. No, I don't. I am saying this out loud knowing good and, and well, I'm not really going to practice this every single day of my life, but I have to try. And every now and again, I'll dial it back. Like, you know what, Brooke, why are you trying to do this all on your own? You can, you can pull someone in to help you. I, I think that I had this conversation with you when we were talking about first doing IBD moms. I was like, okay, so we can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then I was like, and I, I literally sat there and I was like, do you want to do this with me? Why am I trying to do this by myself when there, there is a way that this could be so fantastic if I get another master Jedi to take it over with me. <laughs> did you just call me a master Jedi? I did. Oh nice. my gosh. Hear that? Oh, that was amazing. Yeah. You know, I remember that conversation because it was really very funny. We were sort of exploring going down this path together and then at a yeah. certain point we're we're like three quarters away down this path and you were like are we doing this you want to do this with me right and I was like yeah we're like <laughs> it, I felt I felt like I felt like it was that conversation that you have when you're dating somebody and all of a sudden yeah. you go do you want to be exclusive yeah yeah you're like wait uh are we we are are we are we a thing all right. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's really very funny, but yeah, that's no, I agree. Um, we want to be about community and that's amazing. I do not reach out to people as much as you do. That's amazing that you do that because you're right. It's not, you, we can't expect people to come to us. We have to go to them too. I think that I, I try to live my life treating people how I want to be treated or how I would want to be treated. And I don't always succeed. I'm not very good at continuously reaching out. Like I, I I'm, I'm very bad at that, but every now and again, you'll get a random text from me like, Hey, everything. All right. You good over there. Do you need something? Because I would want that from someone. And I have received that. And that's been a blessing. And so I'm just paying it forward. And I know that how hard, I know how stubborn I am. So I know that there are other people out there going through the exact same thing with the same sense of stubbornness. And um, it's a shame that they would have to go through it alone. Yeah, I do. Well, with the people that are close to me, I do. I always say, I, I'm not trying to be annoying. But especially if I haven't heard from someone for a little while, I will reach out and say, oh, my gosh, I haven't seen you online or gotten a text or a message or an email from you in however many days or weeks, like what's going on. So I do try to do that. I read somewhere recently that about friendship in that that we can't expect people to do that, that we also have to be sharing of what's going on with ourselves. We can't always expect people to ask us what's going on with ourselves right. because sometimes right. I do feel as though I'm the one reaching out. And sometimes mm -hmm. it's a, a little challenging for me when I feel like I'm not receiving on the receiving end of that as much. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. I realized that, that I also have to be giving in that way and letting people know what's going on with me and not just sort of keeping it to myself. True. Because more often than not, people want to help. They just don't know how to help, you know? And I think it's tough when you have a chronic condition because especially with one like IBD, where people associate it with food, their first thing is to tell you what new diet to go on. And it's very frustrating. It is, you know, I grew up in a community, my mom does hair, she has a salon. So I grew up in that kind of community where all of my mom's clients know me very well. They know my son very well. They've been a part of my life forever. And so 
you know, they're concerned about what's happening with me and my health. And they're not all well-versed on inflammatory bowel disease, and that's okay, but they all want to help. So they all have this new diet that, you know, this might work for me. And it's so exhausting to hear. And it's so frustrating to hear because, damn it, if I could just do a diet and be okay, Lordy knows I would totally be on that. But before I get frustrated, I have to take a step back and realize that what they're doing is coming from a place of love and they just don't know how to help. And so I give them ideas about helping. Here's how you can help me. This is what I need. I don't need a diet suggestion, but I do need some babysitting hours. You could just spread this post that I wrote. You could do this. You could do that. Here are ways that you could be of service. I seem to get a a more positive reaction when I do that than just either shutting down when someone tells me to not eat Cheetos because I'm going to eat Cheetos. That's just, (laughs) I'm just putting that out there every now and again. I need a Cheeto. I'm going to eat it. It's a quality Um, of life issue. It really is. I need to have it. So there was something else that you said that was interesting because somebody tweeted at Natalie Hayden of Lights, Camera, Crohn's last week that she got into advocacy because she wanted to be famous, which was kind Uh, of ridiculous (laughs) on a lot of levels because she was on the morning news for years. That was her job. She's a television journalist. So, you know, she already is famous in that way and that any of us would do any of this in order for fame or money like that doesn't make any any sense to me i think that most patient advocates have been forced into their advocacy right you may have executive directors of a foundation that aren't patients um, but they are connected to a patient with that particular condition. It is very rare that you will come across an advocate in the health realm that is not directly affected by that particular disease or some sort of chronic illness. And to say that you went into this to be famous, there are 10,000, 50 million other ways now to become famous. And like you said, Natalie was a journalist. She was a news anchor. She was already known in her area. Um, That was part of her struggle with having Crohn's was because she was well-known and she had this disease that was affecting her work and her life and people were seeing her out and it was changing the way she looked on, you know, a monthly basis. Um, And it's, that is just, it's just disrespectful. Um, You know, Social media has been really great for health advocates, but it's also just been a true source of evil uh, because people find that when you have people following you, they believe that, you know, that, that they have this platform that's a powerful platform, which it is, but in some way, because people follow them, then what they're saying is fact. People over the past few years have started confusing the idea of having an opinion with uh, fact-based information. And they're very uh, strong in their beliefs. And uh, they're strong in uh, the language that they use um, in, you know, correlation to their beliefs. Um, And that particular person is very much on this idea that um, their particular diet has cured their Crohn's disease. And the word cure for any patient is a trigger word. There is nothing in the world that someone living with a chronic condition would love more than to be cured. And so when you throw that word around, it is incredibly dangerous. Because when you have a certain amount of people following you, and you're saying things like, I've cured my Crohn's disease, all you're doing is preying on someone's fear. So to turn that back on someone else and say, oh, well, you're just trying to be famous and I'm over here 
trying to cure people with all my fatty foods, then you're a, you're a, a danger to society, to me. That's, that whole situation was just absolutely insane. And I, you know, it's part of why IBD moms was so important to me because there was so much misinformation. And I was a part of that. I was one of those patients that had very little information and was told that one certain thing would cure my disease. And it ended up affecting me terribly in the long run. And that is scary. It's scary to know that the amount of misinformation that I got almost took my life because people are careless with their words and their action and their arrogance. I feel like that's the difference between hope and false hope. Yeah. We want to provide some real hope, especially to moms who are looking for help and information and empowerment and for someone to look up to who's been through the situations that they're facing right now instead of someone who is offering false hope and usually they're and also on their book. and a sale yeah usually for a price um yeah. the information that we provide through IBD moms is free our twitter chats anyone can come facebook live anything we do it's just this is not something that <laughs> we know we're not going to get rich from it. That's not why we're doing it. No, definitely not. I'm not going to get rich. <laughs> and that's okay. How to wear their baby with an ostomy. And you know what? That's perfectly fine. Now, let me tell you what I am going to get rich off of. I'm going to win the lottery <laughs> and I'm going to get rich off of that. <laughs> that's where I'm getting all my millions. So <laughs> nail it. That's like, it's good. It's in the bank. Like that's just where I'm at right you now. You know what though? You would just end up taking a lot of it and investing it in IBD moms. And then we would, you know, hire a social media manager. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like the plan. That's the dream. And then just, just going around and like, in my IBD mom's plane and like picking up moms and taking them to like the spa and just being like, yeah, so we're going to Oprah this today. You get ostomy supplies and you get, you know, all the things. And yeah, that's my plan. I would love to be able to offer moms pampering. That's, oh. I don't know. Maybe we need to figure out how to do that. That's something. Yeah. That, that's you know. just, I, I, I have to some... figure out how to offer it to myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I need some self care right about now. Man, man. I, I, you know what I want to do? I just want to be able to take a shower without <laughs> someone knocking on the door. Like, Mom, that peanut butter that's in there, is it supposed to look like that? Because I ate some anyway. <laughs> that is the kind of stuff that I just. I just want that kind of self-care where like I take a quiet bath or I don't have to heat up my coffee 50,000 times. I, I don't even know where my coffee is right now. I, I don't know I where don't it either, is. Actually, I it's, think it's in the front with my barking dog. I don't, I don't know. I put it down the other day. This is funny. I, I don't know what I was doing, but I was looking for my coffee. I couldn't find my coffee. I found it much, much later in my closet <laughs> I have a walk-in closet so it's not that crazy I must have been I went in there for something or I was getting dressed or whatever I was doing and then just put it like on the nice. shelf in my closet and yeah. never went never went back in again hey. until however later and I was like you know what uh maybe I need to take some time to be a little more mindful <laughs> <laughs> but really though like how I, I mean that is typical mom behavior yeah I will be on the phone going oh my god where is my phone where <laughs> did I leave it, <laughs> like I every, it well like every day because I don't use my phone to talk on usually so when I'm talking on it I'm like where's my phone <laughs> yeah what what am I where, where is it oh my god I lost my phone it's terrible. Oh, so yeah. now that everybody knows what dorks we are, I mean, they probably already knew that. 
Um, I mean, <laughs> but what, it's fun. Yeah. How, tell me, I know, but so don't tell me, okay. but tell everyone else where to find IBD Moms. IBD Moms is a place where moms can come, find community, find resources, and find love and support. You can find us everywhere on the web at IBD Moms. That's it. And then we're coming up with our new website. Our new website will be dropping the first week of December, which is Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week. I'm so excited. Uh, we will be launching our website at ibdmoms.org. And on there, you'll be able to find articles and information, uh, blog posts from different IBD moms all over the world and um, some nice little medical articles uh, reviewed by some of our favorite doctors and written by the most amazing medical writer I know named Amber Tresca. What? Who that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be wonderful. Um, it's been so enjoyable being on this journey with you. It's and that first week of December, first through the seventh, which is Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week, is going to be off the hook. Um, off the chain. Yeah, we're going to be everywhere during well, we that will time. Be in, we will be in New York in the beginning of the week, yeah. and then we'll be on the Hill. Uh, what uh, what is that? The sixth? If, is it of, the sixth? I think it's the sixth. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Meaning that we're going down to DC. To meet we're with. gonna go yell at senators. Yeah, we're gonna go. Um, well, you know, I always hope to run into the senators, but usually we just end up speaking loudly at members of their staff, who are usually that, wonderful and they yeah, listen. no, they're really great. But so, that week, the, they should be in session, so um, they should be down. We should be okay. able. To meet, so. We should be able to meet up with some of them. All right, that's and cool. And I, I also, anyone who's listening, I want to encourage you to email us your stories. Um, if you have a letter that you want to send to your senator, you don't know how. We can surely tell you how, but because we do visit Washington, and and one of the greatest tools that we can possibly have are your stories and your information. Um, while we're sitting there in front of a legislative aide or in front of a United States Senator or a Congressman, um, the best way to be heard um, is through your own voice. And you can send us your letters, you can send us your stories through email, through DM. We're on Twitter at IBD Moms. I'm Crazy Creole Mommy. Um, Amber is about IBD. You can find us, send us your information. I, I love going into those meetings with a notebook of information where I say, your constituents are saying this and they're like, well, actually we've heard from your, our, our constituents and they, you know, love their healthcare. And I can literally just hand them a notebook and say, actually here, this is what they're saying. These are their stories. This is how our healthcare system and the way that we have politicized our healthcare system is affecting people's lives. I remember one uh, senator said, nobody has ever died from not having health care. And I just wanted to rip the television off the wall and throw it. You know, it's hard for people to not understand certain situations when they don't directly affect them. These representatives um, have health care and pensions for life. You know, they have, there's a hospital at, at, or like a clinic underneath one of the, um, the house office buildings um, that's avail available to them anytime they're in Washington and available to their families. So they don't really know the struggle um, that it is unless they have a chronic condition and have come from a situation where they didn't have proper health care or health care at all. Um, so it's important to share your stories you you have no idea when when the aca when they started doing the aca the amount of people who wrote in and presented their stories as evidence um, helped push for patient protections that's why we have patient protections and why 
um, they were the only thing that weren't uh, pushed to have amended during the original ACA is because people, people testified and people wrote in and they and made sure that they were heard. So we're ridiculously busy and we'll be sure to let everybody know what's going on. And I know I'm going to continually remind people to send in their stories. I know you will too, before yeah. we go down there. So yeah. Thanks. This was a great discussion about community and hope and advocacy and where you and I are sort of finding our own place in it. Thank you for having me on. I know I tend to ramble and I have like crazy dogs <laughs> in the background. And you just allow me to be me. And I, you know, I just appreciate that. Well, you can't be anybody else. You just this can't. Is this is true. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> Doesn't Don't work out. <laughs> no. Thanks, Brooke. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Hey, super listener. What have you got going on this year for Crohn's and Colitis Awareness Week? It's always December 1st through the 7th, no matter what days those dates fall on. It just so happens that this year, Brooke and I will be in New York and then we'll be in DC and we could use your help. Get in contact with us if you're looking to share your story. Because when we go to DC, we tell our own stories, of course, but in some cases, the staffers at congressional representatives' offices have already heard my story or have already heard Brooke's story or have heard the stories of our children. So we're looking to tell more stories about people with IBD. If you would like to share your story, you can do so with us. We do not have to give your name or any identifying information, but we are looking for an authentic, real depiction of what your life has been like living with IBD. Find me at About IBD, find Brooke at Crazy Creole Mommy, or get in touch with both of us at IBD Moms. Not only would I love to hear your story and talk with you about it, but we also want to be able to share it so that our elected representatives understand what we live with every day. You'll be hearing a lot from us in the coming weeks because we've got a ton going on. So be sure to watch Facebook and Instagram. We'll be doing some Facebook Lives and some Twitter chats, things like that. Come and join us. Let's get to know one another. And remember, until next time, I want you to know more about IBD.